Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. As you can see, this is lesson three, pre-research decisions. And essentially what we're gonna start to get into now uh, is how psychologists set up different experiments. Um, when I took psychology in my very first year of university, it was you know, a, a really common class for people to take. One thing that you had to do was take part in a bunch of experiments. Uh, these experiments were designed by students, by professors, uh, for a particular purpose, uh, and they had to make these decisions um, about what they were going to do and how they were going to um, perform the experiment before they, they actually started it. Uh, we're going to perform an experiment. It probably won't be as detailed as some of theirs were, um, but this is trying to try to get a setup for it a little bit. So uh, you can see the key points above me, one sample, two random, and three stratified. We're going to really mostly focus on what samples are and how to randomly take them today. Uh, but we're also going to touch on the different types of experiments that can be done and just a few examples. So uh, pre-research decisions. Uh, researchers begin by asking a question and looking for evidence. Uh, they want to know something. So, you know, how many students in uh, a school uh, like to eat lemons? They have a question and they're going to look for evidence of that to see if, you know, there are any lemons at all in the school. Uh, the method the researcher uses to collect information will partly depend on the research topic. Um, so it depends on what you're researching, but how you're going to collect, but that determines partly how you're going to collect that information. Whatever approach to gathering data a psychologist selects, however, he or she must uh, make certain basic decisions in advance. So one of them is about sampling. And again, you can pause the video here and copy down what uh, is on this slide, or at least in point form if you haven't done that already. Or if you like to pause at the beginning of the slide, I'm going to flip soon so you can pause at the beginning, write that down, and then listen to what I have to say. Um, not every single word on here is super important. You can write it in point form if you're able to do that. But if you want to write it all out, that is totally okay as well. So some basic decisions. One's about a sample. So what is a sample? A sample is a small group of participants out of the total number available that a research studies. Uh, so if a psychologist wants to know uh, about the desire to get into college, uh, how it affects the attitudes of high schools and uh, juniors and seniors, um, the sample would be choosing a smaller group of the juniors and seniors. Obviously, you cannot you know, ask all the juniors and seniors uh, in all of the high schools across the entire country how they feel about um, getting into college or university. But you can try to, you know, take a subset. Maybe you want to ask 50 or 100 or 200. However many um, is reasonable. But how, how do you choose which ones? Because you wouldn't want to choose all from Morris or all from Toronto or all from Winnipeg, depending on if you're doing a Canada-wide study, you'd want to spread it out. How do you choose? So uh, the thing that is really important, no matter what you're doing and how you choose, is that the sample should be representative of the population a researcher is studying. Uh, so an example here given, uh, if you want to know how tall American men were, you wouldn't want to include a large proportion of basketball players or NBA players because this would not be representative of the overall population. In our example of the juniors and seniors wanting to get into college, you wouldn't necessarily want to ask students all from one place because they would have similar attitudes. Uh, or you wouldn't want to only ask um, children of families who have lots of money or not very much money like they would all have similar attitudes uh, so it's important that you're representative and you get people from all walks of life uh, that have all different experiences and how do you do that um, so to avoid a non-representative sample so to make it representative you can do random sampling so that each individual has an equal chance of being represented. So a psychologist might choose every 12th name, uh, sorry, 20th name on a high school or on a school enrollment list. Um, so you'd have to do that for every single school. Uh, take the 20th name, every 20th name from every single school to get a representative sample. You could do this and only take it from two or three schools and that probably wouldn't be 
representative uh, you would want to get from as many schools as you can uh, take a, a, so you might not need to get every school but you want to have some in every province some rural and some urban uh, you would want to just try to diversify as much as you can the second way to get a non-representative sample uh, to avoid it sorry is to stratify the sample and that's key point three uh, a stratified sample is one where you deliberately choose individuals who represent the population being studied so that you can guarantee that you will get a representative sample so a psychologist doing research on school children might select students of both sexes of varying ages of all social classes and from all neighborhoods uh, if they're you know they want to deliberately get a representative sample uh, this is becoming slightly more common in a way like uh, because you get you start to understand as a uh, researcher um, what types of people your research will kind of bring in and if you want to diversify if you want to get more different types of people you actually need to go out and get them uh, sometimes different races or different genders or different ages are more reluctant to participate in different studies so if you want them to be represented in your study you have to find them and get them into it uh, so again it's kind of tricky because by doing that are you only choosing individuals uh, from this particular area and not diversifying um, but you know you do your best to pick from all different walks of life social classes neighborhoods uh, things like that uh, the next thing that a psychologist must decide on before they get going is the research method that they're going to use the method of research uh, they're going to use this method to record predict uh, and eventually maybe if that's your uh, philosophy to control behavior so depending on what you're trying to do will also uh, affect these and we are going to get into there are five of them I believe we're going to get into them in more detail in lesson four so this is just a little overview of these and we're going to talk about them more in the next lesson so a naturalistic observation uh, is the research method in which the psychologist observes the subject in a natural setting without interfering so this would be uh, like you've heard of the I think it's Jane Goodall I think that's her name when she went and lived with the gorillas and she watched them for a very long time um, whenever she was watching them and not interfering with them uh, that is a naturalistic observation they're just out in their natural setting hanging out doing what they do and you're watching so that's one type a second type is a case study so this method involves researching uh, one person or one participant or one situation in detail uh, sometimes it's not very useful to apply to other situations but uh, it is a study of one particular case and figuring out what is going on in that particular instance you can also do a survey which is probably the most common type of research method uh, so information is obtained by asking many individuals a set of questions this can be online surveys can be going and asking them through an interview can be a paper survey can be a survey in which only some of the questions matter and the other ones are to throw them off and it's just so that they don't try to figure out what the survey is all about uh, there's many different types uh, longitudinal survey is a research method in which data is collected about one group over a really long time over a number of years uh, the idea here is that you can see how these people change uh, and you can maybe attribute it to these factors um, and compare it to a group that didn't have these changes uh, so it's to assess how certain characteristics change or remain the same during development so often it's from children you know babies to you know teenagers uh, and you kind of track them to see how their characteristics change during that time uh, it's a long study essentially with a longitudinal study and the last type we're going to talk about is a cross-sectional study so a research method in which data is collected from groups of participants of different ages and compared so we can see the difference now age is kind of uh, the main cross-section that lots of people take but you can split it up into different ways you can split it up into gender um, and 
other ways that you don't need to describe to others, such as socioeconomic class, um, as long as um, there's data to back that up. Uh, so those are the types. We're going to talk about them more in de detail in the next lesson. This was good to get a uh, introduction to them. And now your job. Your job is to complete or look up what these important terms mean and then complete the assignment methods of uh, taking a sample. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I will see you soon.